Hello and welcome back. Today I want to talk about worst case analysis in electronic circuits. Let's say you've designed a circuit, like this one, it's a power supply. You went through all the calculations, everything should be perfect. But will it actually work in real life? I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Well, this is where worst case analysis comes into play. Basically, what that means is you need to take into account the variation of all the parameters that can influence your circuit. In the case of a power supply, the things that could vary are the input voltage, maybe it's not 5, maybe it's 4, maybe it's 6, your output load, this will definitely never be a fixed value, so this will vary from a low load to a higher load, maybe you'll have some transients, and of course temperature will affect the functionality of your circuit, for example the forward voltage drop on your diode. Now you can simulate these using dot step statements or the dot temp statement. But is there something still missing? Could there be something else that could vary and influence your circuit? Well yes there is, and that's what I want to go into today. How does the tolerance of your components influence your circuit functionality? What I mean by this is that none of these components will actually be exactly this value. They will all have tolerances. So if you're curious how to simulate this in LTSpice, then keep watching. So let's start with a basic example. What I got here is a voltage divider made with two resistors that will give us an output voltage proportional to our input voltage. In this case it will give us half our input voltage. Now what happens if we also introduce the tolerances of the components? For example we might use 10% resistors. That means that our resistors will vary somewhere between 900 ohms and 1.1 kilo ohms. So what would be the worst case in this situation? Well, depending on what we're trying to measure, it will be a combination of the extreme values of the two resistors. So how could we simulate this? Well, one way is by using dot step directives. So what I added are two step directives for our two resistors. And if we quickly simulate this, we will see that our output voltage goes between the extreme values of 2.75 and 2.25, based on these resistor values. Now, if your circuit has two components, this is a perfectly valid way of simulating. Now the problem comes when we have a few more components. And that is because LTSpice will not let you use more than three dot step statements at the same time. So how can you overcome this? What is an alternative to this? So this is the next best thing that you can do. So LTSpice doesn't really have a function for simulating worst case. And the guys at Analog own LTSpice at the moment realize this. So they came up with a nice little article in which they explain how to make some functions to simulate worst case analysis. And I got these implemented right here. So basically you can do functions in LTSpice, so you can add a certain function and then a description for it, what you want the function to actually do. And you can make yourself this worst case function that will demand three variables. First being your component's nominal value, so in our case one kilo ohm the resistor, the tolerance so 10%, and then an index, this being a sort of reference designator for your components. So you need to start with zero and then go on from this. And basically what this function will do is create all your possible combinations of extreme values for your components. And to be able to go through all of these combinations, you will need a certain number of runs. And the number of runs being 2 to the power of number of analyzed components. So in this case I'm analyzing two resistors, so I need to do four runs. So I will go from 0 to 4 with a step of 1. And now again we have our various output voltages, and we went through all of the simulations including one in which the components had their default value. And you can use this sort of function on any number of components, on their values, you can use it in transient simulations, you can use it in an AC analysis like I've got over here to analyze an LC filter, so this time I've got five possible combinations of frequencies based on the various extremes, and you can also use it to vary certain parameters inside component models. Like I've got over here a transistor whose model I put outside, and one of its parameters, the threshold voltage, so the voltage at which the MOSFET transistor switches, is inserted into a worst case type of function. So with this transistor I added an input voltage going from 0 to 5 volts, and then I can see when it actually switches. So based on this threshold voltage, it will switch at different input voltages. 
simulating again a realistic behavior. Now, what happens if you have more than a few components? I mean, this sort of function will work very nicely, but up to a certain limit. For example, if we have 10 components, you have a thousand simulations, not a big deal. If you have, on the other hand, 20 components, you need 1 million simulations. Now, LTSpice is a great tool, but I highly doubt that a circuit with 20 components running for a million simulations will yield some useful information and will not crash in the meantime. So what can you do when you have more than just a few components? Now, a solution to that comes in the form of the Monte Carlo type of simulation. And you got a very nice example for this in your LTSpice examples educational directory. Now this is a function that comes with LTSpice, you don't have to actually create this thing. And how does this work? Well, basically you add it instead of your component value, and in here you type in your component default value, and then a certain tolerance. In this case, all components are 5% tolerant. Now, just like with our previous analysis, we need to make a certain number of simulations. In this case, it will be 21. And since this is a filter, so a high order filter, this simulation will tell us what is the bandpass characteristic of this filter. And based on the component tolerances, you can see how much your crossover frequencies will vary. And if you want to make a more accurate simulation, you simply type in that you want more simulations. So I simply typed in 200. And now, well, it's going to take a while, but there you have it. 200 simulations in which all my components took random values. And most probably you've went through all of the extremes. Not definitely, but probably. Now since we're talking about probabilities, every component has a certain tolerance. But is it more probable that your value will be in the middle of this range or at the extremes? Well, if we would look at statistics and probability theories, that will say that the most probable value will be closest to the center value. And the further we move away from our center value, the lower the probability of that value actually occurring is. So how could you analyze that? So with this Monte Carlo simulation, we've taken random values inside the tolerance interval. We didn't take into account this statistical distribution, meaning that all possible values have the same probability. So how could we simulate that not all values have the same probability, that the center values have a higher probability? Well, LTSpice has an answer to that. And that is the Gaussian function, which LTSpice has. So what does this do? Well, basically, if you apply this function on a value of x, then based on probability theory, you will have an output of the function of plus minus x 68% of the times, plus minus 2x 95% of the time, plus minus 3 99.7, and plus minus 4 99.99. .99. So you can apply this function in a simulation in this way. You take your component value, multiply it by 1 plus the Gaussian function of your tolerance divided by 4, and simply run the simulation. So again, I made 100 runs, and if I check the voltage, the voltage will be the current, which is 1 times the resistance. So basically, I'm getting out my resistance value here. And we can see that my 10% 1 kilo ohm resistor varied between 1.65 kilo ohms and 940. So basically, a plus minus 6%. And this is the probability of the values you will get if you take 100 components. Your highest probability is here in the center, so in this plus minus 5 area, but with smaller probability you will have more extreme values. Now if you want to cover the interval a bit better, you can divide by 3, so to cover 99.7% of cases. This time you can see that we're getting closer to the edges. Now you can make more than 100 runs, you can make 1000, 10,000. Depends on what you're actually trying to simulate. Now, if you want to learn more about the differences between simple Monte Carlo or Gaussian component tolerance variation, there's a very good document on this made by the guys at Fiche, who are analyzing temperature sensors. Basically, what they're analyzing is how your component value will vary based on typical Monte Carlo simulation, so in this graph orange, or how it will vary using Gaussian distribution, so the blue lines. It's a great document. Go check it out, I will leave a link to it in the description. And that's about it from me for today. So hope you got some useful information out of this, leave your thoughts in the comments, thank you for watching, if you want to be up to date with all my latest videos, please subscribe to my channel, and hope to see you next time. Bye bye!